That old cell phone you're about to throw out could save a life, thanks to the hard work and quick thinking of a young man who's making a difference in one of Africa's poorest countries, Malawi. Juju is here with the story of the latest segment in our Be the Change, Save a Life series, which is sponsored in part by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And this kid is something. He really is. He was a college sophomore just four years ago, and it's the example of one big idea and a lot of spirit. A fierce competitor, Josh Nesbitt went to Stanford on a full scholarship to play goalie, but it's what he did off the field that makes him a superstar. It all started four years ago when he went to Malawi, Africa during the summer of his sophomore year. He volunteered here at St. Gabriel's Hospital to help children with HIV. This particular hospital was serving about a quarter million people, spread 100 miles in every direction. So you literally had patients walking 60, 80, 100 miles to access care. Basically, one nurse would get onto a motorcycle and drive 10 hours a day trying to track down patients. And so a light bulb went on. Yeah. Instead of biking or walking for hours on end, healthcare workers and patients could text each other within seconds if they just had the right technology. Back at Stanford, surrounded by high-tech engineers, Josh found a software guru who could make it happen. A guy living out of a van on the edge of campus who was hacking away and creating this open source software platform called Frontline SMS. And took a copy of that software, uh, a laptop, 100 recycled mobile phones, uh, and a plane ticket. Back in Malawi, Josh set up an ad hoc network. Soon, the health workers were texting 100 miles in each direction. So someone out in the middle of rural Malawi will break their leg, um, or have an adverse reaction to their drugs. And the community health worker who now has uh, a phone uh, will text in to the local uh, health facility, which might be 60 miles away. So you are like a global 911. Absolutely. The new technology allowed workers at St. Gabriel's to respond to emergency, diagnose patients, and keep track of their medical records, all via texts. Saving time, saving resources, saving lives. Uh, about 150 patients over six months received care who wouldn't have been seen otherwise. The tuberculosis officer came up to me and he said, Josh, uh, we've doubled the number of patients we're treating for tuberculosis now, after six months. Uh, and at that point, um, you're really at the point of no return. The problem was there weren't enough phones to meet the demand. Then another light bulb. I was hit with the statistic that we are discarding 500,000 cell phones every single day. That means half a million phones are going into trash cans and desk drawers daily. This is what one day's worth of trashed phones looks like. A half million every single day. By recycling just 1% of those phones, Josh could raise money to buy new phones for 1 million health workers. Your old phone will turn into two or three phones for health workers. Every one of those phones will connect another 50 to 100 families to emergency services and essential services. Which means 50 million people in Africa can get better health care. Josh's little idea has gone global. And what's amazing to me is that you're taking these sort of discarded items and saving lives with them. I mean, it's, it's your trash, um, but it turns into value and turns into lives saved really quickly. And Josh's mobile medic has moved well beyond Malawi. They've gone to 10 different countries, George, helping three and a half million people. And it's just the power of one man and one idea. But this is how you can help. You can scour your drawers. You can go to the playroom where the kids play with the old cell phones and turn it in. And it can help save lives. And you can do it through Hope Phones. So simple. We have a lot more information on this at abcnews.com and saveone.net. We'll be right back.